This NVMe SSD is 61.44 terabytes. And the crazy part is it's only a two and a half inch NVMe SSD. That means you could easily put 24 of these in a 2U server or 12 in a 1U server, or you could just fit a ton of storage at the edge. And so if your 60 terabyte storage solution looks something like this, well, that is old as dirt compared to this thing. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH and this is the Solidime in D5P 5336, 61.44 terabyte NVMe SSD. I have to say, I am crazy excited about this drive and I'm gonna explain why in this video. And if you're kind of guessing it's just because you can store a lot of stuff on it, well, I, I guess you're right, but, but there's a lot more to it than that. And for a little bit of fun in this video, we actually packed this SSD along with some hard drives and put them into the back of the Cybertruck to see just how much more reliable a SSD would be versus hard drives if you're driving around with a data center that's mobile. Stay tuned for that. And just for full disclosure here, I'm gonna say that Solidime is sponsoring this video because they actually sent this drive. But of course, like everything we do on STH, nobody gets to review this before it goes live except for our team. Now on STH, we've reviewed a number of 15 terabyte, 32 terabyte NVMe SSDs, sure, but this is bigger. And so I thought, well, why should the STH main site audience be the only ones that get to see this giant SSD? So that's why we're doing a video. And so with that, well, let's get to the hardware. Okay, so let's start with uh, with what this little drive is, right? So this is a two and a half inch U.2 SSD. So you can see we kind of have like our just kind of standard two and a half inch form factor. It's really honestly not that fancy of a drive. A lot of the drives that we see these days have like these like crazy heat sinks and all that kind of stuff. But for a PCIe Gen 4 drive, this is uh, this is fairly subdued if we're going to be honest. But before we get too far in this, I just want to talk about well, how do you even fit 61.44 terabytes of storage in something this small. The way you do that is frankly, these days you use QLC NAND, which is, you know, four bits per cell. And I know a lot of folks are going to hear QLC and they're going to immediately say, well, that doesn't have a lot of endurance, but I'm going to change your mind in a little bit on that. But let's stick with the drive itself. Now, while this is a two and a half inch drive, there are other options. For example, there's an E1S, which is the new EDSFF form factor. It's a short one. And that one, because it's a short one, only goes up to 30.72 terabytes. Now, if you want to go big and you want 61.44 terabytes, you can either do the U.2 two and a half inch, or you could do the E1L, which is the elongated EDSFF form factor. Now, of course, not all servers are EDSFF these days, even ones that are EDSFF, they can sometimes only support E3 drives or they can support E1S and not E1L or vice versa. It's just, there's a whole lot of stuff that goes on in E1 or the E1S world or EDSFF world, but uh, you know, two and a half inch, pretty much a lot of people have seen NVMe servers with two and a half inch drives, right? And at this point, you have probably noticed that I have this drive, which is the Solidime D5 P5430. And that drive goes up to 30.72 terabytes. But at the same time, well, you can get 30.72 terabytes. Some people just want more storage and not just like a little bit more storage. We're talking double the storage in the same form factor. In fact, just holding these, the uh, this one's actually heavier. Okay, so let's pull up the spec sheet. I'm just gonna show you this real quickly here. This is using Solidine's 192 layer QLC NAND. And the other big feature here is that this has a 16 kilobyte indirection unit. And why that's important is that this drive is really meant for bulk storage. It's not meant for like, you know, super fast database access. And Solidime just said, hey, look, that's not the use case. We're not gonna optimize this drive for that. And I guess that makes sense. So although this is probably like a 64 terabyte of like raw storage drive, you only get about 61.44 terabytes that are used for user capacity. But let's talk about endurance because I think that's a huge story and something that I think a lot of folks are just gonna get tripped up on, right? We've been using the same metric in the industry called drive writes per day. How many times can you write the entire drive worth of data every day? And this drive is only like 0.58 or something like that drive writes per day. So if you only have 0.58 drive writes per day, but you have a 61.44 terabyte NVMe SSD, that means that you're able to write just under 36 terabytes of data to this drive every single day for five years. And on Solidime's spec sheet, they work it out to be about 65 
petabytes written to this drive over its lifetime. Guys, that's absolutely crazy. And let me just kind of go back a little bit in history here. So we have a ton of SSDs and we have like, you know, thousands of them in production at any given time. And I just kind of want to harken back to days of a long time ago when STH was much smaller and we were just setting up our hosting cluster. That was back in the days when really the NVMe SSDs in the enterprise weren't really a big thing because it took until like the Sandy Bridge revision for those to even start being like useful. And so we use SAS still. And this is a really good example from uh, you know one of the one of the servers that we were using to host STH back in the day. This is a pliant LB200S. That S means that this is a SLC SSD and it's 200 gigabytes only. Now we had a review of these drives back in 2014. And back then like SSD drive rights per day mattered. People wanted to know if you have a 200 gigabyte SSD and you know you have hard drives that are like terabytes, right? They wanted to know how much you could actually write to one of these drives. And these were pretty well known because they basically said, hey, this is a 34 nanometer, I think, SLC NAND. Like you just go write whatever the heck you want because the interface isn't fast enough that you're actually gonna wear it out. So back when this drive was new in like say 2012 or something like that, we were deploying probably 2013, 2014, a little after that. But you know, drive rights per day really matter because you have a small drive, you have 100 gigabyte drive, 200 gigabyte drive, maybe 400 gigabyte drive, that would be crazy. But nowadays things are different. If you have a 61.44 terabyte drive and a point 58 drive write per day thing. That's like writing this entire drive, what, like 178 or so times? And back then, nobody was really thinking like, oh, how can I write an entire drive worth of data 178 times in a single day? Like that wasn't, there weren't that many applications thinking about that. That's what that metric is really for. Drive writes per day are really important when you have small drives, but much less important when you have large drives. And so, because this is a pet peeve of mine, I want to go into this a little bit more. Just take the hard drive example, right? You get 320 terabyte drives and that gives you you know 60 terabytes which is pretty close to 61.44 terabytes and let's think about what you get here well now i have three devices that can fail they usually fail at an order of magnitude higher rate than an ssd so not only do i have a order of magnitude higher failure rate but then i multiply that by three because i have three drives so i have a much higher chance of these or at least one of these three drives failing than I do of this single drive. So I've actually increased my overall reliability by switching to an NVMe SSD. Everybody kind of knows that, right? These drives also don't have a great endurance rating, so they're not gonna combine to be able to write as much data as this NVMe SSD anyway. And then let's just kind of think about the type of storage. Like this drive is really meant to replace hard drives. And when you get to that, well, what are you storing if you have a 61.44 terabyte NVMe SSD. You are not storing like, you know, just like super high performance databases and all that kind of stuff. What you're really storing is you're probably storing like video files. You're probably storing images and things that take a lot of disk space. And guess what? When you do either reads or writes of all of that, you know, video data or photo data or anything like that, those are sequential in nature. They're not like 4K random reads or 4K random writes. And when we're talking about video, you're watching a video right now. So think about the YouTube server that's storing this video. I We take the video, we upload it to YouTube. It does whatever transcoding and kills our quality. But you know, it takes our 4K thing and it has to transcode it into all the different types of you know resolutions and stuff that people wanna see. And it would be too computationally expensive to go and transcode it 100,000 times, say, for how many times hopefully this video gets seen. And so instead, YouTube is storing these. And when they store these videos, well, they're not overwriting it every day, right? They're not storing like 61.44 terabytes of, of video and then just overwriting everything every single day. Right? They're keeping it for a while because you may be watching this the day that it's released, but you also may be watching this a year from now. So in that case, it's not really like a 4K random write 24 seven workload. Instead, when you have a large capacity drive, it's more that you're gonna write once, you're probably gonna read it many times or you're just keeping it for archive and so maybe you'll read it infrequently but you're probably reading more than you're writing and with NAND SSDs reads generally are darn good and they don't really incur that same endurance penalty that we look at when we talk about writes and of course endurance is one of the big challenges with QLC but when you have a big drive well maybe it doesn't matter because if you can write 35 plus terabytes a day to it um, you know I don't, I don't really think most folks are going to do that and when you look at the performance specs of these drives of course this is designed really for those sequential workloads like images and video. And when you do that, you see that you can get over a million read IOPS when you're doing random. 
But when you do writes, you're only getting 43,000 IOP. You know, that's, that's frankly not a lot. On the sequential read side, you're getting about seven gigabytes per second and about 3.3 gigabytes a second on the sequential write side. Remember, sequential is always easier for these drives than doing 4K random or 16K random, right? So let's talk about that performance and let's talk about some of our workloads. We certainly saw this very heavy read bias on this drive when we did our sequential testing, our 4K testing. Also, when you do things like looking at latency and stuff like that, you can tell that this drive is really designed for that model where you're writing once and then you're reading multiple times or infrequently. One other kind of crazy thing that we do is we actually test this on a ton of different PCIe Gen 4 and Gen 5 systems. And it turns out that you actually get a pretty wide array of systems that can utilize a drive like this. And a really good example of that is you can even use things like Intel Xeon D, so Ice Lake D, and you can go run this at full speed. And overall performance wise on the IBM Power, as well as the ARM systems, we tend to get a little bit slower PCIe Gen 4 performance than we get on Intel and AMD. That might just be the maturity of the stacks. Still, while people talk about outdated metrics like drive writes per day on 61.44 terabyte NVMe SSDs, a lot of folks don't talk about the fact that you actually do get a little bit different performance depending on which platform that you're even using. And one of the reasons that I also just kind of think this is super interesting is that if you did use a platform like an Intel Xeon D server or something like that and you're putting it at the edge, well, that allows you to do things like store a ton of data. And the other thing is that those embedded systems, they're often limited by the amount of space that they can occupy as well as the total weight. Think about like if you had a big drone or something like that, like weight really matters if you're doing like, you know, an aircraft or I don't know, something, something where you have to have minimal amounts of weight. You can't use 4.5 pounds or, you know, I think like two and a half kilograms for hard drive storage. Something like this is much more compact and it's also much lighter. And the other thing I think is really interesting about this is like, let's take things that people do with M.2 drives. For example, they'll go do things like get these cards that can go put four or, you know, 20 drives or something like that onto a single card. We also reviewed a NAS system that has 12 M.2 NVMe SSD slots on it. And that entire system with all those drives connected and all that kind of stuff is not as fast as this single drive. It's also, even with those 12 drives, actually doesn't have as much capacity because it's only four terabytes times 12, which only gave us 48 terabytes. So this actually has more capacity in a single drive. Now in a standard 1U 12 bay, just kind of like standard server that you have these days with these two and a half inch drives, you can fit a total of, I think it's like 737 terabytes per U without going to any kind of fancy storage server. And that means in a 2U 24 bay server, you're also talking about over 1.4 petabytes without any kind of fancy chassis. Now, of course, the data center, that's definitely one story, but the other side to this is also just what else can you do with it, right? On the edge, how many applications are out there that just need like a lot of storage, right? Just need 61.44 terabytes that can't use that much space, that also can't use that much power, and also just don't have the weight or have weight restrictions, so they just can't handle that much weight. And another one that I think a lot of folks are overlooking is the fact that like, let's say that you do like a lot of video editing, and let's say you're doing like 8K RAW or something like that, like we can do out of some of these cameras. Now, a lot of those folks just need a ton of capacity, and I actually think that using these drives with something like one of these kind of like, you know, four connectors for like the cabled connections to these U.2 drives, I think it's actually a pretty darn interesting option. You could run these things in workstations even. I mean, just think about that. A card like this that can handle four drives and four of these drives can give you 240 terabytes of storage per PCIe by 16 slot, assuming it can handle bifurcation. That is absolutely crazy. Now, of course, if you have something like a log device that's just getting hammered with writes nonstop, or if you have something where it's like a database where you just need maximum performance, well, there are like SLC drives for that kind of thing, Optane, all that kind of stuff. There are different drives and different classes for those types of applications. But if you just need to store a ton of stuff that you used to store on hard drives, well, maybe a 61.44 terabyte NVMe SSD will make a lot 
lot of sense, and that's why I really like this thing. And so just as a fun experiment to see at the edge what the difference would be, you know, there are a lot of systems and drives that are driving around. And so the thought was, well, what happens if you have a mobile data center and if you have SSDs versus hard drives? Now, of course, this is not scientific. It is definitely a lot more fun. But what we decided to do was make a little mini data center in the back of a Cybertruck. The bed of the Cybertruck has a number of different power outlets and even just using 120, I think that all of the outlets in the Cybertruck have like 40 amps or something like that combined that they can draw. But what we did was we put a little Pelican hard dig case in there. We put a little PDU. We put a super micro server that we'll be having a review on somewhere around now. It's a super cool snow ridge system. And we retrofit into that system a 61.44 terabyte solidime drive just for fun. It didn't really fit in there great, but with a little bit of Velcro, everything works fine. Now in that Pelican case, we also managed to fit using a lot of Velcro, a large QNAP 8-bay system, because the idea was we'd have multiple hard drives to reach the same capacity that we have, or somewhat similar capacity that we have in a single hard drive. And so to do a little road test, we did a little round town driving, and we also drove up to Sedona, Arizona, which is one of the most beautiful places in the world. If you ever get a chance to go, definitely go, because it's absolutely awesome. Now, this system is definitely not the fanciest, but it was just kind of a fun thing to go do, and you can keep the outlets on in the Cybertruck bed while you're driving, so it actually works out like you have a little mini mobile data center that uses somewhere between maybe 0.2 and 0.3 kilowatts. Now between Scottsdale and Sedona, one of the hard drives just failed. And so the idea was, why don't we have a burial for this wonderful drive's last moments? Now I'm not exactly sure where this happened, but it seemed to have happened somewhere between maybe 300 miles and about 400 miles. And in case you're wondering, I didn't leave the drive there. I had one of my friends exhume the drive and then open it up and show his son this. It's important to get little kids to go and like technology. Now, of course, we're not using ruggedized systems, but it was just kind of fun to see that literally a hard drive kicked the bucket after only a few hours of driving, whereas on the SSD side, the thing just kept working. And I think that's important because if you have SSDs, they can be more reliable in a lot of places that storage is needed that, you know, these things move around and are shaking constantly. Of course, there are actual engineers that do a lot better than we do in terms of engineering, but it was just kind of a fun little project. Now, there's another crazy market dynamic that folks in our forums have picked up on, and that's really centered around this drive. So this is a 15.36 terabyte drive. And when people were looking at like the price of this drive versus getting like smaller, like four and eight terabyte class drives, it actually turns out that this is less expensive than getting used drives that were, you know, the smaller capacities. That's crazy. And that's part of the reason that these types of drives like the 61.44 terabyte, like this 15.36 terabyte, all these drives that are large new drives that are targeting this hard drive capacity class or better than hard drive capacity class. I just think that those things are absolutely awesome. I hope you guys do too. And hey guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, well, why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues, but also why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on this notification so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.